Welcome one and all, this is WWE 2015, How I Would Book It. For those of you who don't know what the How I Would Book It series is, for whatever reason, maybe you've never seen it, maybe you've never visited my website before, maybe you've never heard of How I Would Book It. How I Would Book It is very self-explanatory. How I Would Book It is basically... Me picking a period from the history of wrestling, whether it be recent or not very recent, I've done both, uh, and showing how I would book it, how I would have done it differently, like the invasion of WWE from WCW. Like TNA 2010, which by far, in my opinion, was one of the worst years in TNA history. Or, modern times. Like WWE 2015. Which by far is one of the weakest lulls. Or, uh, weakest periods WWE has ever been in. In, modern, in the modern era. Whatever you want to blame it on, doesn't matter. Either way, WWE has been very weak the last couple of months. And now I'm taking the opportunity to seize and show you all how I would have booked it. How I would... Look, excuse me if I sound a little off. This is the first time I'm doing something like this. It's going to take a little time to get accustomed to doing something like this. I'm used to, for the How I Would Book It series, just writing it down in Microsoft Word. I'm not used to speaking anything that I do in How I Would Book It. So this is going to take some time getting used to. Uh, this is just my way of introducing, as I always do, some background into the period I chose, why I chose it, and what you're going to expect in the series. For one thing, I'm booking from January 2015 all the way through to Payback, which is in April. And I will set WWE up for the feuds going into SummerSlam. I can tell you, for one thing, a fan favorite and a crowd pleaser that would see to come back is the King of the Ring tournament. The King of the Ring will not come back. The Attitude Era will not come back. Just because I'm booking, showing how I would book WWE, doesn't mean I'm changing everything about WWE. Though I, like most people, hate the three hours and think it's way too long, I'm keeping it. Though, like most people, I hate the PG uh, attachment to WWE's programming. I'm keeping it. And though I hate and don't think the 12 months of pay-per-views work anymore meaning having a pay-per-view every single month. I don't think that works anymore. For this, um, for this series, I'm getting rid of Elimination Chamber. And no, I'm not replacing it with Fastlane. I'm getting rid of Elimination Chamber. I'm getting rid of the February pay-per-view in general. No more February pay-per-view. There's no pay-per-view in between WrestleMania and Royal Rumble. There might be, however, a buffer TV special where I run certain feuds that 
aren't going to make it to WrestleMania and, you know, use it to end it there. Or maybe I just use it on the pay on the shows to end it. You know, something like that. Who knows? I haven't really decided yet what I'm going to do with that. I might do a special, I might not. Um, I guess the other thing I can do, uh, explain is that I'm keeping all the storylines WWE did from, mm, let me explain that for a second. I actually started this, as you can tell it's a wrestling computer game, I actually started this season in November and to that point I did everything WWE did but just a little bit different the authority still has not come back the authority is not here the authority lost power at Survivor Series and still has not returned and will not return anytime soon next Brock Lesnar is world champion I for one absolutely loved Brock Lesnar John Cena and Seth Rollins at Royal Rumble in a triple threat match for the WWE World Heavyweight title even though that match was just designed to cover John Cena, so John Cena could stay strong going into WrestleMania season. It was also it was it was a great great match, and the highlight of the Royal Rumble. Nothing will change. Brock Lesnar, John Cena, and Seth Rollins will be together in a triple threat match at the Royal Rumble. How we get there might be a little bit different. Um, um, I apologize. I am thinking about this stuff off the top of my head. And usually it's easy for me to think of this stuff off the top of my head. But right now it's harder, I guess, because I'm on camera. And once again, like I said, I would like you to give me, you know, it's going to take some time getting used to. So give me a little time because I've never done this before. Um, before I finish it off. Before I finish off this video, let me take a look at uh, let me like let you guys take a look at the champions. AJ Lee is still the deepest champion. Uh, I'm running the storyline I'm currently doing, and, because I felt like WWE could get a little bit more out of it than they are. Uh, I'm running uh, by if you don't know what I'm talking about. It's the Bella Twins versus AJ and Paige. I've been running that. I started, like I said, I started in November to get more mileage out of certain things and get my vision of where I want WWE to be by the Royal Rumble underway before the Royal Rumble, so I had more time. And my vision of that is having AJ and Paige team up against the Bellas. Luke Harper is the Intercontinental Champion. Um, though currently I'm not doing anything with the Intercontinental title, I guess the only thing I can say is I wanted to get the belt off Ziggler because I feel like he would be better off not holding the title. Going into Royal Rumble, I didn't want him holding the title, so I got it off right when I started. Rusev is the United States Champion, much like the Intercontinental Champion is a little fuzzy right now of what he's going to be doing. As I mentioned previously, Brock Lesnar is the WWE World Heavyweight Champion. 
and Goldust and Stardust are the tag team champions. Um, I explained the world title feud. I still have Ambrose versus Wyatt going, which I think will end at the Royal Rumble to set up to allow Wyatt time to set up his feud with The Undertaker going into WrestleMania. The Dust Brothers versus the Nation of Domination. Only, it is not the full nation. It is D'Lo Brown and Mark Henry. The basis of this feud is the Outlaws came back and that gave another, that opened the door for other past teams to reunite and try their luck in the tag team division once again. Goldust did it, Road Dogg did it, Billy Gunn did it, why can't Mark Henry and D'Lo? I brought D'Lo in a bit, um, I brought D'Lo in to be, you know, the pre-show jobber to bait, to, you know, get people ready, etc, etc, you know, maybe give somebody a win here, win there, then I realized D'Lo and Mark Henry were a tag team, I have a weak tag team division, why not? I went over the tag the Authority feud with John Cena already, and I also went out for the Divas feud. What I want to explain to close the video out is, once again, please give me some time. I've never done this before. I'm used to Microsoft Word. I'm used to just writing down my thoughts and what I want to see, have what I thought would happen. But I'm not doing that because doing this, videotaping it, is more efficient in my opinion. But that's just me. I'm doing it to maybe, instead of pushing out um, one written description a month, or one written description of what I want, what I saw happen from January to February in WWE during this period, I could be doing three, four, five, six, seven, eight videos in the span of two weeks and get done with this series or this edition of the series in a month instead of it taking three months for me to write it and another three months for me to put it all up maybe even longer to write it who knew I don't know um this game is total total extreme wrestling 2013 excuse me, 2013, this game is a computer simulation wrestling game that gives you the ability to take control of whatever company you want in whatever period you want. The only downside is that if you're not totally committed and totally interested in the game, the $35 that you have to pay to get the game is a deal breaker. But if you want to show how you would book WWE 2015 or TNA 2015 or WWE um, 1998, the Attitude Era, or WCW, try and keep WCW, ECW open in uh, 2001, 2000. Or even if you want to go all the way back because you're one of those people who loved the territories, you can do that in this game. Um... I'll have a link down in the description to down in the description to find out more about this more info about this game where you can buy it where you can ask questions where you can find mods um, of the game if you don't know what a mod is well basically you get a default a default database for the game and other people have to have made other databases for the game or mods a way to change the game and that gives you the ability those mods give you the ability to play WWE 2015 or WWE 2010 or TNA 2007 2002 you know etc etc the the possibilities are almost endless of what year you can play of what mod you can use to play the game yes this game is very in depth yes um if you're not totally into playing and understanding the game, it might be hard to get into. But, um, it's worth it. I've had this game for a year, and I still, my opinion of the game has not changed.
and it will not change. I love this game, and I'm going to love it even more, playing it even more than I did using it for the How I Would Book It series. I just want to cover one more thing, and that's show identity, because as you can tell, I'm looking at the announcers right now. I, to start, Michael Cole will be on both Raw and SmackDown, but eventually I'm going to cut Michael Cole out of SmackDown and just leave Byron, Jerry, and another announcer and keep Michael Cole on Raw with Booker T and JBL. And main event has Scott Stanford, Jason Albert, and Corey Graves. Um... I'm just going to explain this very quickly. I'm a strong believer in every show having their own identity. And right now, SmackDown, in real life, I mean, does not have its own identity from Raw because Michael Cole welcomes you to both shows every week and you hear his voice on Raw and SmackDown every single week. Now you might ask, what's the big deal? Hearing a different voice on SmackDown as you do on Raw makes the show feel different. That's why Michael Cole, for me, will not remain on SmackDown. He will remain on pay-per-views in Raw, but that's it. And that's why Michael Cole, Byron Saxton, JBL, Jer Jerry Lawler are not on main event. And that's also why I called Corey Graves up and I called Albert up from NXT. Though they worked out very well in NXT... I needed him on the roster to give to ha give me the ability to give main event its own dis own distinct sound, and that's what I'm doing, giving main event its own distinct sound. Uh, as I wrap up, I hope you enjoyed this background video of WWE 2015 from Total Extreme Wrestling 2013. I hope I just didn't confuse you, but that was the Total Extreme Wrestling 2013 is the name of the game. And this is how I would book it. WWE 2015. I'll see you next time. I hope you enjoyed.